Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Macon Campbell and this is Making Stuff. Okay, so let's get straight back into it. Today I'm going to continue stripping this action as far as I possibly can, as well as pulling and storing all of the reeds. Just a little something interesting to note. If you have a look here, it seems like this sub bass mute over here is held in place by these copper brackets and the tension is provided by this spring over here. It's activated on the side opens and closes like that but what is strange is all the other mutes are held on by this material uh, instead of uh, brass hinges now i'm not sure if that's intentional i'm also not sure if these were introduced at a later stage when someone perhaps did repairs to this organ which is entirely possible i see these two brackets also don't match i like the idea of the brackets i'm not sure if i should carry that theme along to the rest of the mutes i'm guessing that is not period correct i might ask for some advice on the reed organ tech so the two options are that I can replace all of these with actual hinges like these or keep these material hinges and uh, incorporate those on this sub base as well. Now another bit of information that I just thought I'd share is uh, down at the bottom. So let me turn this thing around. Here. Yeah. So just for interest and education's sake, uh, these things are not called little pieces of wood. They are called pallets. Now, these pallets here are pretty much the business end of the keys. When you press a key, basically this is what you're activating. The keys sit just above those little wooden spindles that you saw on the other side. And once a spindle is pressed, which I will simulate right now, that is what happens. You press a key, the spindle pushes down on the pallet, and the pallet is separated from the reed bed. Now, as we saw underneath each pallet, uh, I'll give you a closer look now, are holes. And because this is the base section, there are three reeds poking out here. The front reed, the rear reed, and the sub base right there in the middle. So basically what's happening is when you pump the bellows, you are building up pressure inside this cavity. And as long as these are shut, no air should be escaping meaning no sound is produced. So as soon as you press a key, that pressure is released, passing through those reeds, producing the sound. I am probably gonna have to do a little bit of adjustment on these springs. I found that uh, by testing them all from the other side, I noticed that the tension in some of the springs is a little bit weak. So I'd like to try and get them all uh, close to the same at least. But we'll get to that in a later video. Another thing I'd like to show you are the reeds and how I'm going to be removing and storing them. So let's turn this thing around again and I'll give you a closer look. So as we obviously know by now, the reeds are located underneath all of these mutes. So in one of my last videos, I slapped together this, which I called my reed puller, uh, which is just basically a piece of wire that I flattened at the end and bent over so that I could grab the reeds and pull them out. Give you a closer look here. Now this worked perfectly, especially for the smaller reeds on the treble side. But when I was trying to figure out how to store these reeds, I wanted to see what the length of the base reeds were, which are on this side, which I know are quite a bit longer than the treble reeds. As you can see here, while I was trying to pull them out, uh, it kept on slipping out and I created quite a few scratches over here. This one over here is an old scratch, all of these ones are new ones. So I had no choice but to come up with a new reed puller and here it is, reed puller 2.0. So just as a comparison I'm going to pull out this which I believe is the longest reed and the smallest treble reed on that side and show you what they look like side by side. Stick a spacer in here, grab hold of this one, pull it out, there we go, grab hold of this one. There we go. So as you can see, the base reads and the treble reads uh, vary quite significantly. This being the smallest one, they gradually grow all the way to this size. Now from what I've learned about these reads is uh, this is the body of the reed and this is the tongue of the reed. So it stands to reason that the longer and the thicker the tongue of the reed, the deeper or lower the frequency of sound that it produces. So basically how I'm going to store these is I've got a whole bunch of papers that look just like this. I'm going to fold them like that and like that and like that and 
Once that's done, I'll stick a reed in each one of them and I will name and number each one of them. And in this way I can store them safely uh, without any harm coming to them. Stack them neatly in a nice organized fashion. So the first step is going to be removing all these mutes. So let's get started. So before I take any of these mutes off, I'm just going to name each of them so that I know where they go back. This one I'm going to name TR for treble rear, bass rear, sub bass, front bass, front treble. One last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a tiny mark over here so that I know where these two mutes have to meet up. Obviously do the same on this side and let's roll.
Okay, there we go guys. I'm going to cut this part short. I think I've just about stripped everything that I can strip on this particular section of the organ. It's Friday afternoon now and I'd really like to get this part finished uh, by the end of the day if I can. So next week I can jump back in and get started with uh, cleaning and repairing and restoring all of the parts that I just took out. I think you'll agree that uh, there are quite a lot more parts to this section than there were in the stop action which was the first part that I restored. Thank Thankfully none of it looks too complex, most of the mechanisms and actuators seem fairly self-explanatory and I think I have a fairly good grasp on how all of these parts work and how they go together. The main thing for the next part is going to be repetition, there's many many small parts that need to be cleaned and inspected before they can get put back together. So for the future as far as possible I'm going to try and continue to do two videos per week because I think that is going to keep them a little bit shorter and concise as well as fairly in depth at the same time. So let me wrap up this outro as I've got to leave now to pick up my kids from school. As usual thank you very much for watching. If you like this video give me a thumbs up perhaps share it with your friends. If you'd like to see some pictures uh, behind the scenes you can go follow me on Instagram there are links in the description and I don't really mention it much anymore but I do have a patreon page so if you'd like to show me a little bit more support and help me carry on doing this for as long as I possibly can links are also in the description and uh, till next time keep making stuff